Before I get started, I would just like to say a big thank you to Fury of the Film fan who featured me in his Fan of the Week series. And to all the people who subscribed as a result of that video, I would like to say welcome, thank you for subscribing, and I look forward to interacting with you. And as long as you don't leave a comment like boobs or your opinions don't matter, everything will be okay, okay? But between you and me, they're pretty spectacular. So this is the week of Green Lantern, but from what I gather, it's not the greatest week ever. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to see the movie for quite a while, but I did see Green Lantern Emerald Knights, the latest uh, directed DVD feature from Warner Brothers Animation. I liked it. I think this is one of those rare instances where DC Animation got it right, and you really don't need to be a fan of the comic books that this is based on. It is a great way to delve into the, the world of Green Lantern, a great way to kind of understand what their philosophy is, what their mentality is, why certain people can be Green Lanterns and others really can't. Uh, it's an anthology of Green Lantern stories, but the best ones in the movie, in my opinion, are the first two. The first two stories uh, in this are so epic in scale, they're so true to what it means to be Green Lantern. They're, they really represent the essence of this uh, kind of superhero. The third story in the bunch, it it's a little it's a, t a little too long. It kind of drags a little bit. It's a classic warrior story. The fourth story in the anthology, it's funnier. It's more entertaining and it's really um it's one of those instances where you realize what an interesting character Mogo can actually be. Because you think, you know, Mogo, he's kind of a cool idea and that's it because he's a Green Lantern plant. But what can you do with a Green Lantern plant? I mean, it's, like, it's not like you can give it a love interest or something unless a comet <laughs> smashes into it, penetrates it. <laughs> that, that's cosmic porn, Jesus. And never mind. So like I was saying, Mogo uh, is you can't really do anything with Mogo, but they really thought of a way to use that character and it's a funny, humorous way. So the fourth story, again, not maybe not as mature and as elegant as the first two, but really entertaining. The fifth story is the one that I'm most... Uh, it kind of deals... This is the one story where you kind of need to know what Green Lanterns are and what the history of the Green Lantern Corps is and what the destiny is of these characters, although it's really heavily implied in the story what will happen. But um, it's the Ab and Sewer story just it felt like the most mediocre to me. I mean, I understood what was going on, I thought, okay, they kind of need to get this out of the way because it's important, but um, just didn't really intrigue me like the first four. The movie ends with a big fight uh, against a very big villain and it's really, it's just a little bit of golden age silliness in my opinion because it's such an outrageous plan and the last action sequences are so over the top. The movie definitely ends with a bang and that's uh, something positive I can say about it. But at the same time I wish they would have been a bit more creative than, you know, we have to finish this bad guy or we'll just throw a really big rock at him. In terms of voice acting, um, I think Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan is a match made in heaven. I mean, fans have been crying for Nathan Fillion to be cast as Hal Jordan for years. It goes along with um, Jimon Honsu being the voice of uh, Black Panther. It just, you know, if you can't have him as the live action version, at least get his awesome voice. And also, uh, some voices in this had a lot of personality. I really liked the drill sergeant in the second story. And also in the second story, some people com are complaining that Kilowog's voice was not gruff enough. But I simply think that Kilowog was very young when that particular story was taking place. And um, uh, that's how I reason it anyway. In terms of animation, again, I go back to those uh, first two stories because um, y usually with animation you have the classic boring humanoid uh, character, but in those first two stories we finally saw more alien species and that's the beauty of Green Lantern because you get to see all these interesting aliens interacting and I really liked some of the designs, I really liked the design of the first Green Lantern from the first story because I thought he looks like such an non-intimidating kind of alien. 
but again that that's that was his character but yeah in, in terms of animation i really liked how uh, they designed the different kinds of aliens how those aliens interacted and uh, the first story even though i complained a little bit about it the choreography in those fights were re was really good so emerald knights uh, just makes a great combination with Green Lantern first flight. You know, this is why I love animation. They have such, you know, they take it beyond the comics, comic books, but they do things that movies can't do. And a great, with first flight, which is more of a traditional heroic type of story, and Emerald Knight that really goes into the history of the corpse and the philosophy of the Green Lantern Corp. You know, these two together provide such an awesome introduction into this universe if you're not a fan and personally I think this kind of introduction which is better a uh, better thought more versatile more true to uh, the comic books this is the kind of introduction you need not the kind that Hollywood is currently trying to push down our throats with a Green Lantern movie that lots of people are complaining about